this video we'll be talking about histograms, bar charts, box plots, and best fit lines with using GeoGebra. GeoGebra is a program that you can input data and it does a visual display for you. You can also create, you can create, I don't know if you can see that, circles, lines, different shapes, and use that graph manipulation and create objects and display things that you would like. I started going off to GeoGebra and went over to the help section and under the help section there's a list of commands and all it has commands for every different thing that you can think of that would be on GeoGebra. Now I started off box bar chart since that was one of the things that we will cover we'll go here. If we look off to the right side it has chart commands and has a bunch of li a list of bunch of different um, charts that you can find the commands for and in the commands they have all these different examples of values that you can put in see they want they want a list of raw data and then they want the width bars and it tells you what it does it creates a bar chart using the given given data and bars with the given width so in here i found out all the different commands and then i played around with geogebra and created different graphs and used the examples they had here to see what it actually did in geogebra so now if we go to geogebra We'll start off with the different things. You notice there's a bunch of lists here, which we'll talk about in a second. But what's really neat about GeoGebra is that you can have a, a spreadsheet right here and input that data down into. Now well, let's change this around a little bit and let's bring you up. Bring you up. So you can put a bunch of data into a spreadsheet and then create lists of all this data that you want and how you do that is down here at the bottom there's an input line and you type in cell range so it s tells you what it wants it wants the start cell so we'll choose this one C2 and the end cell will go down to C11 and if we click enter creates a list of from C2 to C11 right there and so we can always just reference that list later on when we want to use it. So all of these lists I have over here are from the data from over here. We'll talk about when we get to each each one. Now let's start off with histograms. Histograms well, what is a histogram? A histogram a histogram is a graph that has a bunch of different bars that are touching each other. So it displays data using graphs and it has an X and Y axis as most do and all of these different bars are touching each other. The reason why they're touching each other is you have a continuous spectrum of data. So if you look at this one right here you start off with zero and it goes all the way up to 50. So this is a continuous spectrum. There's no breaks. It's all being plotted with all the same values. And so you can see how the frequency matches what the x-axis is. And this one happens to be miles per gallon. So these are histograms. So let's go through making a histogram. If we type in histogram, we notice that it comes up with a bunch of different lists that we want to use. And each one of these have different uses but we're going to use this first one here the class boundaries now this is asking how many different classes are we going to have so what is the range that we're going to have on the x-axis and we're going to say we want it to be a list of 11 things because that is how big our list that we are going to use and we're going to use list 3 and it displays the data now what is list 3 so if we come up here and we look at list 3 it says 5.35 5.37 and if we now make this go away and bring out our bar chart we look up what it is what is 5.3 this right here these go together this is the year and this is the minimum wage value. So we have tied up minimum wages over 10 years from 1995 to 2005 and matched up, paired up the minimum wage with that. So 
this bar chart, or histogram, excuse me, this histogram displays from 1995, 1996, 1997, 1998, all the way up to 2005, the minimum wage. And if we look at this, it starts off pretty strong. It, the list starts off at 5.35 and then it goes up a little bit and then it starts going down so using this histogram we can show that the data that we wanted was the minimum wage over ten years and we can display how that data has either increased or decreased and what was the peak what was the minimum and we can do all these different things we're now going to go over how to make a bar chart so we'll get rid of our histogram for now what is a bar chart? A bar chart is like a histogram, only it's a little bit different. If we notice that these have separations between all of them, there's separation here, and separations all of them. Each one of the bars are separated in some way. And what that is, is if you look at this one right here, we have day one, day two, day three. So all of the data is being still on the same scale, however, our x-axis, instead of being a continuous data, you break it up into things. We've broken up into months for this one, there's the year difference, we have a bunch of different letters that mean something here. Each one of these date, these charts, each one of these bars, mean something. So we have electronics, medical, music, clothing, services, and this is the revenue percent versus the department of the store. So if you look at this one, we have revenue over department. And now department isn't continuous. You have different departments that are that are not the same. So if you said, okay, I'm gonna line up my departments, you could line it up electronics, musical, medical, clothing, or you could switch around and do musical, clothing, electronics. There's no order that is needed on this side because it's not a continuous line. So now let's look at how to make a bar chart. So if we go down to our bottom and type in bar chart, a bunch of different lists come up again. And you can go to the command commands at geogebra.com and find out what all of these mean. But the one we're look we're gonna look at is gonna be this one. The list of data, list of frequencies and width of bars. So all of these things are different. So what is our, our list of data? Our data is going to be what's along the x-axis. And with this, we're going to go back to our spreadsheet. We're going to use the states versus the SAT uh, mathematic average score. So we have New Hampshire, Mass, Vermont, Maine, Connecticut, and their average scores for their math SATs. So we're going to use a bar chart to to use this. We notice that our x, our list of data, is not continuous. There's no order that you can order these states in because someone else could come up and say, oh, well, I want Connecticut first, I want Maine first, Vermont to be second, New Hampshire to be first since it's the best state. You can order all these any different way you want. So there's no continuous part. So for list of data, we're going to come up here and we already made our list, and we're going to use list one. So list one. In list of frequencies, we already said we're going to be the scores, and that's in list two. In width of bars, now you either can go from, you can do a whole one, you can do half a one, you can change it all around. We're going to go with 0.8, just so there's a gap in there, but the bars are thick enough that they look pretty nice. So we look at this, and wow, that goes really high. So we're going to scale down our y-axis quite a bit, and we notice it's like a histogram where we can compare heights of different things only there's little gaps in the, the between them to show that they're not it's not continuous so here's our bar chart and that's how you make a basic bar chart so now let's go into our box plot box plots are fun I think they are great ways to display data and that it's just it's just fun making box plots so we'll make this go away in the same way we'll go to box plots and it has a bunch of different things here we're gonna do the first one Y offset now this is how much Y is gonna be offset from the x-axis Do we want the box plot to show up right on the x-axis do we want it to be floating in midair do we want do we want it to have
how do we want it in relation to the x-axis? Y scale talks about the width, the width of the the um, box plot. So is it going to be really skinny, or is it going to be really elongated? Is it going to have a huge range of y values it goes over, or is it just going to be like one and you barely can see it? So just because we already it's already been done, we're going to do a scale of 100. We're going to go to 30 in list of raw data. We are going to use list 5. In list 5, list 5 is we have in A, we have the names of pictures and then we have their salaries, but since those numbers are so gigantic, I divided by 10,000. So we're going to have the number of $10,000 they make. So this this person makes $810,000 for just being a pitcher on a baseball team. So we have a bunch of different pitchers, we have their salaries, and we have uh, the number divided by 10,000. And if we go to our box plot, which is going to be way the heck out here, let's just bring this down a little bit, and then here we go. And here's our box plot. You notice that because we said the first one was, we'll bring that back, box plot. Our y offset was 100, it's up at 100. y scale is 30, so this is bigger. If we did a y offset, let's do just do 100 again and do a y scale of, let's make it 50 and see what happens. In list 5, we get a bigger one. So this is with the y scale of y scale of 50, and if we y scale of 30, 50, 50, 30, it's just how, how wide it is. And now let's talk about what exactly does this mean. In this box, we have 50% of the data in this, between the edge of the box and this line. We have 25% between this line and the edge of the box. We have another 25%. So a total of 100% of the data is from this line to here. So that means that this point is our lo lowest number, and this point is our highest number in the data. This line right here is the average, and in here we have 25%, and here we have another 25%. So if we have a small area that has a large number of percent of the data, that means there's a lot of numbers close by. So in here we have 25%, in here we have 25%, in here we have 25%, in here 25%. So the most numbers we have are going to be in this first quartile or this second quartile since they're the smallest width. And then the third, the second quartile, I'm sorry, the first quartile, the third quartile, the second quartile is going to have the third amount, and then the fourth quartile is going to have the fourth. So each one of these lines is a quartile, so we have our first quartile, our second, our third, and our fourth. So there we have the the box plot. Now let's talk about the line of best fit. We're going to change our y scale back to 1 to 1 just to make it, oh, and let's zoom in a little bit. All right, just so we can bring it back. So we're going to talk about line of best fit, or linear regression. To, to, to have this, first we're going to need order pairs. And I have already made those order pairs in the spreadsheet, and then made a list out of them. So in the spreadsheet, we have all these points, which correspond to the minimum wage values over 10. So 0 is the first year, up to 10 is the 10th year. And so we have 0 to 10 as our x, and our y values are going to be the minimum wage. So now let's look at a, a fit of a polynomial. So we could do a fit polynomial, or we could do fit line. We could do whatever we want. So let's try fit line and see list of points. I've already made a list. The list is up here in list 6. So we'll do list 6 and see what we get. This is the line that best fits our data. So if we bring back our, here it was, if we bring back our 